Hyvee is rolling out Vision Group's electronic shelf tags in over 230 stores. According to Progressive Grocer, Vision Group's technology will allow Hyvee to do real-time price updates, in-store fulfillment with flashing LEDs for order preparation, and for the first time I've ever seen in a press release, it's your day promotions to reduce waste on perishable items, contributing to a more sustainable retailing model. By automating the labeling process, Hy-V employees can focus on tasks such as replenishment and customer service, creating a richer experience for both employees and shoppers. Moet, with Hy-V now deploying ESLs almost chain wide, it seems we've come to a place where, to quote your colleague John Clear, it's not if. But when we see ESL scale to all grocers, are any grocers still holding out? And if so, why are they? You know, broadly, I think the U.S. market here is just catching up to their European con- counterparts in, in this regard. And right. part of it was always driven by, you know, a very traditional way of looking at, you know, what what does it cost? Right. Uh, printing a labor and uh, printing a label and the labor required to kind of change. Right. I think COVID changed that dynamic uh, quite a bit. The the second thing which I would say is um, Walmart just recently announced a big investment to roll out electronic shelf tabs mm-hmm. to all of their stores by 2026. So, you know, this this thing is coming. So I don't think it's it's a question of if it's a it's a question on uh, when. The use cases here are pretty significant beyond just really thinking about, you know, the cost of the labor. It's about how do you kind of digitize the entire experience? You know, 97% of um, consumers in the US in urban markets have a smartphone, right? So how do you kind of use that mobile device and create a connection beyond just, you know, providing information on price? You know, where was the product source? You know, is it uh, gluten-free? Is it keto-friendly, right? So the the, the things which this can offer are immense. I would say though here, you know, there are a few things which which um, grocers need to be cognizant of. And think about that as the Uber surge pricing or predatory pricing, right? Oh, right, so right, for sure. As long as it is focused around, listen here, you know, I have some stuff, it's, it's going to expire today. Yep. Let's offer a deal and make it a win-win. I think that's great. That's great for consumers. That's great for society. But you don't want to be in a situation where it kind of becomes a little bit predatory in nature. So that would be yeah. my only watch out. Yeah, you don't want to pull a Wendy's here, right? I mean, yeah, I joked about the intraday being the first time I've seen that. But yeah, as long as you're doing it macro level for everyone and everyone's getting a deal because you're doing it and you're getting more deals more often, I think the consumers are going to love it. So, so, and I mean, and do you think we're going to see, is 2025 the year of the electronic shelf label? What do you think here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, this is a, I think this is Me a huge too. announcement. And really, I, I want to, we've talked at length on this show about the benefits from an operational perspective and what this does for, you know, improving efficiency at the store on the store side. But I think what's really important to call out here, especially for High V, which has a beloved following, is just how much better the customer experience is going to be because of the things like the intraday promotions that Mohit was just talking about. I mean, we have an event coming up here with Ethan Chernovsky of Placer AI. And, uh, one of the things that he was talking to us about is that grocers are really trying to push for an increased basket size. So not increased visits as much as just making sure that you can put more in your basket when you're on those trips and putting, being able to like at the blink of an eye, change pricing on some of those key items that your customers are going into to purchase or that they didn't know that they want to purchase, but the price is right. Like this is a way that those grocers will be able to do that. And it improves customer loyalty. It helps have, you know, more people on the floor that are able to help customers. And so overall, I think it's just improving things all around. And the ROI is absolutely getting there. So I think that's, that's the, those are the key th- kind of things for me, Chris, about why I think it's going to be so impactful in the next year. Yeah, that's a great call too. We got Ethan coming your way next Wednesday on mm-hmm. LinkedIn. We're going to be talking to him live. He's handing out his retail report card for the mid year, which is always a fun one to, to, to watch, but yeah. And I mean, the use cases for electronic shelf labels, I think I haven't jotted it down recently, but I got to think it's like over 10 to, it's got to be in the 10 to 15 range. Yeah. And so I can't understand why this is going so slow. So you think it's, it's definitely going to hit, hit the, the apex of, of the trend curve here next year. At least I hope it does. And finally I would might add, but, uh, 
But Chris, what do you think here? What what's your what's your final word on electronic shelf labels and why the industry has been slow? Is it going to get faster? The whole nine yards. I I think it is a case of not if but when. Okay. You know, if you think about um, ten years ago, you know, only thirty five percent of the American population had a smartphone compared to almost ninety seven percent today. I think the cautionary tale here, though, is for certain retailers, you still need to know your customer. So mm -hmm. an area, you know. As Mohit mentioned, in urban areas, the use case or the adaptability of smartphones is quite high, but in rural areas, it's less than 85%. And so you still have a decent customer base that does not have a smartphone and therefore that could impact um, sales. As well, when you look at um, demographics, you know, those 65 plus and over, you know, um, only 76% of the population owns a smartphone. So I think it is about your customer and then using and engaging in this technology to be successful. And I think that's why you've seen a slow progression um, up until this point. Hmm. Interesting. So, so Chris, let me push you on that. So you think, you think, you think smartphone adoption is a, is a potential thing that retailers need to think through, because I think there's a, there's probably still a lot of use cases for ESLs that don't require the interaction with the consumer a smartphone, right? That's fair. But I mean, I think from a friction standpoint, that's probably the easiest, you know, using your smartphone to understand, you know, pricing. And so I think that is um, a high consideration in going to ESLs um, over the last couple of years. Got it. Oh, versus just, okay, got it. Versus got it. Just making the switch. Just yeah. making the switch. 